Matrix Live, the number one feature asked of us or mentioned at the stand at FOSDEM was all about how to use Alman X to join a room if you've got the address. And if you were one of those people or you have that one, you will love this next demo because Mauro is going to show us all about it. He's also going to show us about pills um, and maybe even other things. Let's see. Mauro, you have the floor. Okay, let's start. So first of all, everyone can see the screen. Okay, yep. perfect. Yep. So, well, so as you said, other people want to join a room uh, through probably their address. And uh, I would say that there is a way to do that uh, before this feature, but it was kind of a secret feature that we had. You will just pretty much slash join to any room and write down the address, press enter and send it. Well, of course, this was kind of a power user feature that was quite unknown. So we found a way to make this very streamlined, when easy, easier uh, through a dedicated screen. So when you try to start a new chat by pressing this button, you will see that now we have a new option to essentially join a room by its address. So I can just go here and I will copy and paste an address. Just give me a second. So it's literally hash twin, hash twim, colon yes. matrix. Yeah. Like this. Yep. Matrix.org, right? Yep. Oh, perfect. Now it works for fine. But yeah, as you can see, this works completely fine. You can just put the address of a public room and you say, okay. <laughs> but pretty much this is the gist of uh, uh, how the system works. Um, of course, if you try to input an invalid room or if you try to set up something that it's uh, essentially uh, a room that does not exist, uh, like this, and try to continue, they will, will say that it's not a valid address. So, uh, so about the other feature that we just implemented, um, we essentially, um, well, as you know, we have a way to um, mention the users. And when we mention a user, we usually show for them a specific pill of them. And through this pill, you can check their, um, check their profile. However, in Element Web, we also have something similar for, um, for permalinks. So anytime you write down a permalink or a room address, you will see that a pill is rendered on the timeline. So let's say that, for example, I have this address here. I paste it. And I send it. As you can see now, instead of displaying the address, the row address itself, when it's rendered on the timeline, this will display instead uh, a nice pill showing me the name of the room and uh, the avatar of the room itself. So just stop here. And what will happen is that I will just go directly to the room itself. Uh, this actually, um, it goes actually one step further. For example, I can send the permalink to the room, uh, the permalink containing the room ID. This also will get converted to it. And if I want, if I want to instead send um, a permalink to a specific event of a room, like in this case, you will see that now, uh, this renders a message in room name, and by tapping on it, I will automatically get uh, to the room and I glide the message that I was uh, looking at. It's essentially the same thing as the permalinks. We just pretty much beautified them in a way to make them, uh, let's say, let's to make the message more nice to, to read, to see, and less crowded. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for adding the ability to join rooms in the entire matrix uh, ecosystem. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to show you a small tool that I made that's called Multiverse. It's a terminal UI client for testing the REST SDK in real world conditions. So first of all, sorry, this is going to be a bit of a technical presentation and that might lose uh, some people watching this video. Um, as a reminder, the REST SDK is the technical code base that we're using in both uh, ElementX apps and the cryptographic parts are also used uh, for the web version of Element. So the tool uh, that I made is a client uh, for a matri matrix 
that allows you to show all the rooms and uh, it actually spawns all the possible timelines for each of your rooms and that's why it, it's called multiverse because it contains all the timelines it's around 1000 lines of code at the moment and if i understand correctly this has been the inspiration for the aurora experiment by matthew in the past which was also uh, written in rust so right now i'm going to to launch it in the terminal as you can see um it started as a tool to debug the read receipts so basically we were developing support for read receipts and the unread uh, unread room, ma room marker um, that's shown in the Elementix apps. And we wanted it to be as precise as possible so that you don't get in the stuck and read uh, situation as much as possible. So basically what, what, it, what it does is on the left, you can see that it shows you uh, all the rooms and on the right, it will show you the debug state for the read receipts in that room. For instance, this is a room called uh, Ben Test Account Room, and you can see that there are no unread messages, and also very, some very technical information at the bottom showing me where is what is the event that holds the latest active uh, read receipt. And same for another room where it says that there are 700 unread messages. Good thing is I can also mark a room uh, as read and observe that uh, it happens. Well, hopefully at some point. Yes, uh, the unread count dropped to zero now. All right, so that was the initial feature that was implemented and that was very useful for development. Um, as you can see, uh, it's interactive, so I can simulate some user inputs and reproduce some real world issues with full logging, local debugging on my machine. Allows me to reproduce bugs in the same programming language and environment as the one I am used to. And I don't need to spend a lot of time setting up Android Studio or iOS developer environment and uh, go through many layers of um, like app different application layers, basically. So that also reduces the number of possible sources of bugs, which is really nice. Um, later, I also added support for showing the events themselves. So basically what you will see in an application like Element X can also simulate back pagination, to retrieve elements, uh, events, sorry, from the the, uh, the the either the cache or the network, and uh, as well as the row events uh, themselves. So if I if you are um, know how we like what the events look like in JSON form, this is like the JSON representation of those events, and. Recently, we've also used it for the persistent storage implementation. So the feature that makes it possible to have the events available, even though you're offline or disconnected and also uh, load them once and try to not reload them from the network every time you reopen the app. And so the technical implementation was uh, using is still actually using a linked list of events chunks. Um, that you can uh, that are stored in in the database, and this uh, terminal UI application will actually show you the this linked list with all the chunks. Also, that was super useful for debugging and spotting bugs, as well as uh, figuring out some optimization opportunities. So, for instance, here you can see at the top there is the chunk five, which is a list of events. And it has a lazy previous, which means that it's able to reload from the persistent storage. So the next time I'll do a back pagination, uh, it will actually load another chunk from storage and tell me there is another one in storage again. And yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, in terms of limitations, well, it cannot be used as a terminal client for sending messages. And like, it's, it's not a fully fledged uh, matrix client that we can use in the real world, if you're interested in that, you should use a project like IMB instead. And also the crypto setup is a bit lacking, so there's no support to re-enter the, the um, secret phrase and, and all the passwords that are related to crypto. So you will run into many historical UTDs unable to decrypt. Thanks for listening and have a nice day. Awesome. It's very cool.
through Jeff Padin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the flexibility, but it did feel um, that actually we had we had just enough time to, uh, to put it in there. So um, very, very good. And I think there's going to be a Matrix Live of this in um, a bit more detail in the next couple of weeks. Is that right? He's nodding. Awesome. Andy, you were saying you're going to use it for... Um... I'm planning to use it to test the history sharing, or process the, the history sharing feature. Cool. This is a very nice test trick. Okay, that must be it now. Can we go? Right. All right, I'm here. Bye-bye all. Have a good weekend, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.